From caves to top secret government facilities, and from brand new islands to old lost towns, we've got a bunch of places you cannot go to talk about today, and sometimes, despite the rules, people still do. Here is part two of the top 10 banned places people are forbidden from visiting but went anyway. Enter at your own risk. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Lascaux Cave. This cave is located in France, and it got itself the title of being a UNESCO World Heritage Site after its discovery in 1940 due to the incredible incredible prehistoric paintings that can be seen on the walls. Of course, this became a popular tourist destination and people were jumping at the chance to see these works of art completed by the early humans. But as it turns out, breathing is not very good for the art. The carbon monoxide that visitors were expelling was beginning to cause damage to these cave paintings and, of course, once they're gone, there's nothing that we can do to get them back. This led to the site being closed to the public in 1963. Now the only people allowed in are researchers and preservationists who work to make sure that the art stays for as long as possible. In our number 9 spot today we have Lake Nyos. So this isn't a place that is necessarily illegal to visit, but it definitely is a place that you should only live or even really visit at your own risk. Lake Nyos is located in Cameroon and it is different from any regular old lake because of the volcanic crater that it sits in. The magma floor releases carbon dioxide in both the water and the surrounding air, making it a less than ideal place to live and breathe. Usually the CO2 just dissipates into the air, mostly harmlessly, but in 1986 there was a limnic eruption that caused a catastrophe. A limnic eruption is very rare, but it's what happens when dissolved carbon dioxide suddenly erupts from lake waters, which then goes on to form a gas cloud. This resulting gas cloud is extremely dangerous and is capable of displacing the oxygen in the area, which of course is lethal to any living thing, which is exactly what happened in 1986. This limnic eruption caused a noxious cloud of more than 1 million tons of CO2. This ended up taking the lives of 1,700 people in the area, as well as 3,500 livestock, which made it the first known large scale asphyxiation caused by a natural event. Despite the threat of another eruption, as well as the lake's weakening walls that could result in a massive flood, people have resettled the area around the lake. I'm not gonna lie, I wouldn't risk it, which makes me wonder why these people chose to. I'm sure there's gotta be some reason though. In our number 8 spot today we have the Svalbard Seed Vault. Deep within a mountain that sits in between Norway and the North Pole sits this vault that is more than 320 feet inside. This vault holds a massive collection of seeds. Like we're talking about 890,000 different preserved seed samples from nearly every country in the world. The vault that holds these seeds is made to withstand both man-made and natural disasters and the seeds inside are meant to be kept safe so in the case of some sort of huge disaster, the seeds kept safe inside would ensure the continuation of a wide variety of really diverse food options. The door to this vault is only opened a few times a year, and just a few people are allowed inside in order to deliver seeds to the shelves. In our number 7 spot today, we have St. Kilda. St. Kilda is the most remote settlement of the British Isles, and it is so isolated that it is often cut off by storms for weeks, and sometimes even months at one time. That is most likely the reason as to why the previous inhabitants had developed a culture, economy, and government that was completely separate and different to their English rulers. Unfortunately, between missionaries and officials coming to the island in an attempt to change their way of life that was working perfectly fine for them, their sources of income dwindling, births not being able to keep up with the death rate, and the emigration rate combined, as well as the inevitable disease-ridden tourists coming to their island for whatever reason, things for those who once lived on the island changed drastically and it was decided that they would evacuate this island in 1930. Since then, people have tried to resettle the island, but none have permanently remained, likely because of the isolation. In our number 6 spot today, we have Surtsey Island. This island was born in 1963, and by that I mean it emerged from the sea in that year just off of the coast of Iceland after four years of being formed by an undersea volcano. A brand new island. What could we possibly do with that? Well, I'm sure humans could find a million and one ways to ruin 
ruin it. Surprisingly, we decided not to do that at all. Instead, this island was protected in order to allow scientists to study how new ecosystems form and what happens when there's really no human involvement in that. This means that those who are permitted to go to the island have some very strict rules to adhere to, and it's not like just anyone is allowed to go. I mean, I couldn't go, you probably couldn't go. Well, I don't want to make that assumption, I don't know. Maybe you're a scientist. One of these rules is that there are no seeds allowed on the island, and no using the facilities either. The last rule is because one day when scientists found a tomato growing on the island, they were confused as to how. Turns out somebody had gone number two not too long before, and thus a new poop tomato was grown from the ground. Kinda gross, kinda cool, not gonna lie. In our number five spot today we have Centralia. Located in Pennsylvania, this town is often referred to as one of the gateways to hell. That is due to the fire that spread in an underground coal mine underneath the town in 19 1962. Despite the years it's been, the fire still blazes underground, which causes the smoke and poisonous gases to rise up from the ground, not only causing an eerie appearance, but also a very serious health hazard. The temperatures can be so hot in areas that one guy's backyard was measured at 626 degrees Fahrenheit. Sometimes the fire will also burn through supports underground, which in the end turns into a sinkhole. This has caused pets, wildlife, and residents to unsuspectingly get swallowed up into the hole. In 1984, the US government ordered a total evacuation of the town, but a handful of residents refused to leave and even went to court over the right to stay in the town for as long as they live. In our number four spot today, we have Pine Gap. This location is in Australia and it is a heavily guarded and top secret facility. It is said that Pine Gap is actually a joint defense facility between the Australian and the United States governments. It is said that it is operated by both the CIA and NSA, that it is strictly off limits to anyone not involved or given high security clearance. Apparently, at first, this place was said to be a space research center, but now it has become abundantly clear that it is actually used to support the United States in both intelligence as well as military activities. If someone decided to trespass into this top secret area, it would undoubtedly put them in a whole world of trouble. Kind of like an Area 51 deal. In our number three spot today, we have La Oroya. Located in Peru, this town has a population of 30,000 people, despite the metal smelter contamination that has been seen since 1922. The smelter closed in 2009 after the company that ran it declared bankruptcy, but here's how that happened in the first place. The American owned company ran out of money because they had to fund the environmental cleanup and the anti pollution measures. Seems like maybe they should have chosen a different path. Seems like it didn't pay off to pollute someone else's air. I don't know. I guess they forgot that there's consequences for actions. It still remains as one of the most polluted areas in the entire world, and the toxic metals have gone on to infect the water, the soil, and the air. While it is completely unsafe to live there, people still do and sadly they suffer the extreme adverse effects of it. In our number two spot today we have Mezgor. This is a location in Russia that finds its home in the Ural Mountains. This little town is top secret and is completely forbidden to any kind of visitor. This is said to be because the town is apparently home to Russia's nuclear missiles and the rules are so strict that people aren't even allowed near the town or its vicinity. There are also rumors that suggest suggest that this town contains Mount Yamantau and that inside this mountain there is the Russian government's extensive bunker, making this just another reason why this town is completely cut off to anyone who isn't a very high ranking official. In our number one spot today we have Wittenoom. This place in Australia is the home to a former blue asbestos mine which is exactly what makes it one of the most contaminated places in the country. I mean this literally. The roads were paved with asbestos. Even after the mine shut down in 1966. While this city was once the home to 20,000 residents, the population dropped significantly after the deaths of 300 former mine workers from mesothelioma. Apparently it was decided that it would be too expensive to clean up the town, so instead the government just declared it unfit to inhabit and took it off the maps. While most people have since left the town, it is said that three residents refused to leave and still remain in the almost completely abandoned town. Alright guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I'll see you next time. Bye.